Hello, Periscope, and thank you for uh, for joining me on another broadcast. Uh, I'm going to take you on uh, kind of a, a little uh, tour of my story at the U.S. Open. So behind us, it doesn't look like uh, like anything uh, too fancy, but this used to be the uh, it's now the practice facility. Um, it used to be the players' lounge. And in 1991, when I was nine years old, I uh, I snuck in this entrance right here to get to the players' lounge, and uh, <laughs> there are a lot of people. It's kind of busy like it is right now. There are a lot of people coming in and out. And uh, I was able to sneak through, uh, kind of get underneath the curtain, and uh, I found myself uh, eventually playing video games with a guy named uh, Pete Sampras, who was also the defending champion. I think we all remember uh, his victory here in, uh, in 1990. I think that was his first ever Grand Slam. I'm not sure that any of us had uh, any idea of, uh, of what would follow. Um, so now as we make our way through the grounds, I'm going to point it out a little bit and give you some context of, uh, of where we're actually at on the grounds. So if you look out now, that bad boy didn't exist back in 1991, but we are going to go visit uh, right now uh, a court that definitely existed and uh, also something that I was able to, uh, to sneak into. It's, uh, it's being retired after this year, and that's Louis Armstrong Stadium. So this is the courtyard. You can see where all the, all the food happens. Uh, there's some crazy stuff. Uh, court 11 is over there. Um, so this is just before kickoff of uh, Serena Williams' match. Uh, so you see a lot of people getting food, getting ready for the uh, for the night's matches. It's actually a pretty cool deal. And in a second, uh, sorry if the, the music's loud, but I can't ask them to stop. That's kind of the vibe of, uh, of the U.S. Open. Um, we're soon going to come up on Louis Armstrong Stadium, which uh, obviously before Arthur Ashe Stadium was built, was the center court. So all the matches you saw with McEnroe and and Lendl through the years and Jimmy Connors and uh, you know the, the, the first uh, first times that Edward won. Um, first time Peak won, the first time Agassi won, all happened at that venue right there in the distance. You can see it above uh, above the tent top, which is uh, which is a pretty cool deal. Um, I actually didn't get to play out there too much, but uh, it's kind of sentimental for a lot of players today because they had a lot of history on that court, and that's where uh, the U.S. Open was pretty much made. Because of the quality of tennis that took place in that building, made that building. So uh, just to give you a little context of how, how close they actually are, uh, pretty cool, uh, pretty cool little little deal we got there. Uh, and you guys wouldn't know it from where you're sitting, but it smells amazing. It's like a combination of like nachos and cinnabons. It's uh, absolutely fantastic. So uh, and I don't know what those guys are. Believe it or not, that uh, that marching band wasn't there in uh, 1991 either. I don't. I, I'm not sure. Uh, but the, one of the cool things about being able to walk around uh, out here now is that uh, underneath Arthur Ashe Stadium, there's a big hallway that kind of goes underneath and uh, makes it easy to get out to Louis Armstrong or the practice court. So a lot, you won't see a lot of the top players actually walking through the grounds. Uh, they kind of walk around in the in the, in the hallows of, of of the stadium and kind of get where they're going. So for a good decade, a good 10 years, I didn't really uh, walk out here much. You know, you don't get to experience the atmosphere. You know, when, when you're playing a night match, you kind of uh, you kind of just sit down below in the dungeon and then all of a sudden you're waiting to go play out there, but you don't really get to see the festive part or, or the business part or kind of the fan experience of, uh, of the U.S. Open. So it's, it's cool to be able to kind of take this walk with you now. Um, so... Uh, Pretty sweet. And uh, what we're gonna do, uh, what we're gonna do now is head over to uh, a court that has uh, some special significance with uh, with me personally. Um, so uh, the first time I ever played a singles match in the juniors in uh, in the U.S. Open was on uh, was on court 13. And so we're gonna head over there now. Um, and I guess the most famous match I played on uh, on Court 13 was we were supposed to play at Louis Armstrong, um, which was uh, which we saw just. Um, so that's Ash Armstrong's back there. Uh, but one of the more famous matches I was supposed to play David Ferrer in the uh, 
what was it, the round of 16 in uh, in 2011. And they were having uh, they were having court issues, and the court kept leaking to the bottom. And so, uh, you know, I was able to see this. I saw it while we were warming up. There was water coming through the bottom of the court, and it was, uh, you know, it, it was calling, so I might have gone out of the shot for a second. Um, anyway, so we went back in the locker room, and the powers that be uh, down in the dungeon and the, the, the referee said, listen, we're going to fix the problem. I said, it's going to be tough to fix a problem that's coming from underneath the court. I'm not, this isn't one of the deals where you can just kind of put a Band-Aid on it and, uh, and be done with it. And so uh, kind of what, what maybe some of you saw was us coming back out, uh, me stepping on the spot again, water coming up, and they had decided to let it dry. It was never going to dry because it's a, you know, a, a problem from, uh, from underneath. That's why people fear water damage in their homes. Um, anyway, so we were stuck. There was a match going on in Nash, a uh, match going on in Grandstand. Uh, round of 16 match. I was the, the number one American at the time, playing another guy in the, in the top 10 in the world. And uh, well, I said, you know, they, well, where are we going to put you guys? Let's wait until night session and put you on out. I go, listen, dude, we were on, you know, first up or one o'clock or something like that. I said, listen, we, we, were, we started hydrating last night. We ate our meals based on the shot clock that we would be uh, playing at this time. Um, we, we can't throw our schedule completely off and our preparation completely off. Uh, what court is open? So they uh, they said, well, it's too small. Court 13, it only holds uh, it only holds so many people. So this is court 13 where I played David Ferrer. We played a round of 16 match out of the U.S. Open. And uh, coincidentally, it was actually the same place I played my first ever uh, junior match. So I looked, at, uh, I looked at David. I said, listen, are you okay with it if we go play? I go, I don't really care where we play. You know, the, the lines are the same distance uh, everywhere. And David's the best guy ever. You know, he, all he wants to do is get out there and uh, he wants to uh, get out there and, uh, and just do some battles. So um, we came out here. We played a tough four setter. I won that day. Uh, so it, it has a lot of history for me. And I actually haven't been back here uh, since that match. So that was, what, five years ago now. Um, but this is kind of where, where my U.S. Open career started, so it'll always hold a, a, special, a special place for me. Um, we're going to head to the other side of the U.S. Open here in a second. I'll be right back uh, after uh, I finish up the story. But So this is a very familiar place for me. Tons of improvements on the other side of the U.S. Open. Uh, we're going to head over to the Grey Goose Bar uh, by, Grand, by the new Grandstand Court, which uh, uh, I'm used to the old one, so I feel like the old guy here now because I don't know my way around. But we'll be right back uh, at the Grey Goose Bar. And... Uh, make a honey deuce and uh, chat some more there. Thanks for walking with me.